Peace and blessings. This is Lisa Marie. Welcome to, it's still audio book one, but it is episode three. And I say episode now because, I mean, this is actually a slash between what? A podcast, an audio book, and I don't know what else we could call it, but definitely content. And I really wanted to do something that was actually speaking and not always the visuals, even though actually y'all, for those that are just listening to this, I actually um, do videotape the whole thing just in case I want to use the content again, or I want to use the visuals. I think there's blessings and benefits in all. I think it's depending on like, what do you want to convey? What is your intention for any artist? And I do believe creating videos over there and or creating content, whether whatever form of us, audio, visual, and so many other ways, interactive or, you know, it still is a form of art and it's still a form of expression. And I feel like different expressions are so wonderful. That's why it's so important to have the artists of the world because the different expressions gives voice to your different expressions within you. And it allows you to see that you could have it. So, but I know that also people gravitate to different ways that we communicate. And some voices sound really good over a speaker, you know what I'm saying, or a mic. And also not just that, but also sometimes when we turn off some of the senses, we are connecting to the senses that really needs to always be open, which is the third eye. And I feel like when we're shutting down the visuals, we're not giving the listeners any options to not see themselves in a discussion, to not see themselves or connect to or get an affirmation or confirmation, if you will, when they're watching these spiritual videos or listening to these spiritual audios or watching. So there's a different kind of hearing, I believe, when you don't see it. There's another kind of feeling and you're still using all of your senses, but you're using them in a different way. And a lot of times in order to really see change is to see is to change. <laughs> so I feel like I like it, but you know, it's funny because I feel like this is me changing it up and I'm like really loving it. I'm loving looking in the camera but I'm also feeling like, like my mind, as I'm speaking to you, I'm visualizing myself like in a booth. And I have a mic on my head and I've got a no, so I've got a mic in front of me. It's like an old school, behind the scene, jazz, but live on radio kind of vibe, you know, and uh, something that I've, I've actually been a part of, different radio programs where you're actually there. And that feeling of connecting to the host live is way different than the Zooms and all that other stuff, but also auditory, you know, that's a lot of times how us as spiritual beings, how we even hear. Some of us can hear spirit, like a literal voice or some type of sound or some type of, you know, it's all energy, really. Sounds is energy, you know, speed is energy, it's all energy, right? So, and so today I wanted to talk to you about energy, how to use your own energy to get you what you want <laughs> and nothing else because when you understand that you everything you want you are well equipped to have in other words yeah you you're well equipped to have because you have the things in you to have the things you want it's just about clarity like i think about that all the time like and clarity is an energy too so what is clarity to me on a spiritual level clarity is peace Clarity, because before you get clear about something, you have to have a, a clear space. And a lot of times a clear space is really a peaceful space because we want to be at peace with our decisions, peace with our desires, and yeah, and peace with, of course, ourselves, right? So we, if we, because then we'll know truly what is for us instead of what we've been told, what is for our children, what is for our spouses. What is for these different things? Because think about it, as women, we usually are everything for everybody. I mean, I could actually say, like, I've been a mother, I've been a wife, like, and there's a point that some of us get to where we come out and be like, I just need to express and do myself. And that's a normal process. Because energy, since we're talking about that tonight, energy changes too. Energy flows. It doesn't even that it changes because it's always flowing. So it never really changes, but the format, the vessel, changes that that's that it that it encompasses just like this body and the one we had before and the one before that same energy different different uh, packaging and let me just say this but the packaging is not for nothing the packaging really actually is an indication of 
the things you may want or desire, the things that you uh, are attracted to. So the packaging is not nothing. The packaging is really, um, like I said, a, a roadmap, a visual roadmap to you and your purpose on the earth. So that's why you got to love yourself. And that's just your outer self. But if you can love your outer self, that love is coming from within. So you really love everything. And there's an acceptance. And once you understand that you are worthy, that you were meant to be here, that you were fashioned in the divine's most high image, whatever that means for anybody in the world. I mean, really, and to me, you know, I'm going to say it, nature, you're talking about energy, the energy of nature. Nobody's above it. Nobody's, but a lot of people are below it. <laughs> Nobody's above it, okay? And you will, no matter what, you'll feel an energy. I don't know, I got to ask Manasi, but I could have sworn I heard our neighbor. The only thing I heard was him saying, because he was speaking English, but I couldn't understand everything. He said something about a lot of people come here to heal. I thought I heard that, and that was deep to me to hear that, but I'm almost sure I did. I don't know in what context, and I'm telling you, it is. Some can, and the healing can look different on everybody because that's energy. So my healing experience is going to look different than the Manasi's healing experience. Like we're all going to have a different healing experience. And some things, when, let me tell you about healing, like everybody was with the energy, the healing energy, or energy of healing or healing energy. The one thing that so many of us say, we use the word, is that it's not always going to look nice or be easy. And meaning that, if you truly would heal and want to, the things that may exist in your life will no longer probably exist. Because the energy, remember, the energy has to attract each other. When we say like, attract, like, like, or anyway, this is what I believe. I believe when metaphysicians are talking about like attracts like, I don't think it means the same exact energy attracts the same exact energy. When we say, and, we're, and, and I'm hoping, I'm going to even put it, I'm hoping that it's positively being said, but it, to me, it really means that it is two things that come together, two energy fields, and not in just one, two. The energy fields within the self has energy that come together in harmony. So the, the violin and, or let me say, the drum and the bass don't have to be the same instruments, but they sure have to be in harmony. And so harmony is what, because you see that in nature. There's different things in nature that require different things from nature. So there's different bushes, trees, flowers that requires different care than, it, than its brother, bush, trees, and flowers. But yet they all coexist in one garden or they coexist in one community or one country or one landmass. So it just says that, yeah, you can be different and still and, and be of the same, but still require different needs. So energy and, and still be in harmony. You can be different, but still be in harmony. As a matter of fact, that's the goal. How do we harmonize the energies that we that are around us, the energies that we give out? I mean, there's a lot of ways to me about energy. I think like things have energy. We know because they hold your energy. If you hold this pillow and you say, oh, my God, this pillow. Oh, I love this pillow. Oh, this pillow, pillow, pillow. You actually, and this pillow was taken away from you, you would literally feel something's off. You would feel you lost something. You would feel, so things definitely have energy, whether it was the energy we give to it, we imbue upon it. I remember reading something a long time ago. I cannot even remember where it's from. This is like, I was heavily into, and still am, you know, into the metaphysics, so constantly delving and enjoyably delving. And I remember this, the, some spiritual book was talking about the teddy bear, the teddy bear, the infamous teddy bear. The beautiful teddy bear, the teddy bear that keeps us warm at night, that makes us feel safe, that we can tell all our tr troubles to, that get us through sickness, that get us through even joyful moments, the teddy bear. And how the reason why the teddy bear is so special in, um, in our history, really, in this, you know, in a lot of ways, especially in American history, is because of that as you are with something that you consider your best friend, it thus then becomes that. You imbued it what, what you needed, the attributes and the things that you needed, the energy of it. And it did, because if you're telling something, something long enough and believing in it, it becomes alive. So you, because we have that much energetic power and our breath has that power and our vibration of words, which is energy, have power as well. 
And then you have, you're doing an act of actually physically touching, sleeping, loving, holding, kissing, might be waking up in the morning with it, talking to it, naming it. Now you're really imbuing it. Now it's really yours. So energy of things, the energy of things is very important. So one way to make sure your energy is good, look around and see if your stuff matched you. How do you feel when you look at the things that are around you? And that really is going to have to start feeling like, how do you feel when you look at the house, the living room, the stuff in it, like every single thing? But how do you feel then the people in it? Do they represent you? Do you represent them? It's like energy change. Like I said, it doesn't change. I keep wanting to say that because it's not even a transformation. You change and you transform. But energy flows. And different things will have more energy flow into your space. Think of, you know, what, what do you want to feel? That's, that's the energy of you. The energy of you. What do you want to feel? Have you ever felt that thing or that feeling you want to feel? Have you ever felt it before? So can you recognize it? Can you bring it forth again? Something that you know that it happened, that you, and it was such a great event and you felt a certain way. Can you remember that event? Can you bring that back into yourself? Can you do it? It's a good question, isn't it? It's a very good question. And I think that you can. I believe that you can. So, but then also creating new feelings of happiness and joy and gratitude. Those new feelings. You know, y'all, I tell you, I don't feel like I learned how to give thanks until I've moved here. And it's only been a month. I think tomorrow makes a month. Or maybe today is even, but yeah, we had a month. I don't even, I don't even think that the gratefulness of every little thing, because I'm living the reality of not knowing what's next. So the energy of faith, one of the greatest energies, one of the most powerful energies, because it's our belief. And believing that there's more, believing that there's greater, believing that we're protected, believing that we're loved, that's an energy. And, and you believe in that. And you imagine everybody in your house believe in that. And then everybody in your neighborhood believe in that. And everybody in your community believe in that. And everybody, your, you can see how this can be good. So the energy of faith is a powerful one. And that's the one that says, this too shall pass. Or seeing the good in what does not even look good. Seeing it and knowing that it is good. It is coming for you. We all need inspiration at this time. We all need to stay up. We all do. I know what people are going through because most everyone you're looking at is going through something, whether they express it, whether they say it. We are all on the same planet, not just borough or neighborhood or city. We're on the same planet. Our guide, y'all be with us, like energy. So the energy of faith, very much. But the belief that there's more, the belief that there's something better, the belief that this too shall pass, the belief of the strength that you have to move, push anything out of your life, and you do have the power. The belief to change, the belief to get up and go and know that your steps will be guided, that you are fine. And you're going to grow in that. And you're going to grow in your faith because you're going to face challenges. And you're going to overcome them. I and mean, when you don't, it's because you didn't listen, because you didn't believe. And you're going to learn how to believe more. And you're going to be a better believer. So the energy of faith, powerful one. And the ultimate one, I believe, and I mean, there's so much more, and I could probably go on. I just don't want to keep the video so long for you, but, or I'm sorry, the audio. You're going to have to give me a chance to get used to that because I'm so used to doing videos, but. The energy of love, they say love is the most powerful force in the universe. Now, that's what I hear. That's what I've heard from some of the best you know, love agents out here. I've heard that, and I truly believe that. And love is already exists like any energy. So there's nothing you need to do to get it. And it is the very thing that runs inside and through you. Sometimes a doctor will see it as blood or plasma or cells, but those are all energy. That's all light. That's all, that's all a, almost a kaleidoscope of light and movement. And movement, of course, is energy. So that is what you deserve. That's what you already, you don't have to seek it. You don't have to look for it. You don't, have to, you don't even have to look for it within because I'm telling you that it's there. You just have to let it out. 
and you'll see it in the way you care about yourself. You'll see it in the way that you care about your mental, your physical, your spiritual, your emotional. You'll start seeing that you're nothing stopping you. You're going to continue to love on you and do for you. You're, you're going to see the picture as bigger. You're going to grow as much as you can. Like you will, you will get to the pinnacle of who you are in this lifetime. I am calling that out today because I feel it and I know it. And the more you're going through and the harder the time is at this moment, that's the one that's coming up. You know you're coming up. You've been here before. Remember, you've been, that's the belief that's going back to the, the energy of faith. You've been here before. You know this. And you know you ain't did nothing bad. It wasn't because you wasn't ready. It wasn't because you didn't prepare. And even if it was, that was the, the purpose too. That was exactly what I said. We're leading to a road, right? So the road led you there. You needed to do exactly what you do because you're going to learn something, not because you're bad, because you need to learn it so that you can use it for what is coming. And what is coming is always good. You just have to be equipped. And you are equipped because you have it all in you. The energy of love, the highest energy that one could have. And let me say, I got to practice energy of love every day in real life. Okay, that looks nice, but I got to practice every day. Living with another person, oh my God, that's some serious energy of love. Because you feel this and you've wanted this and they feel, it's, it's, but that is the challenge. That's where you really have to do If you want to transcend it, you have to see it and you have to work with it. And you have to work with yourself. That's the energy of you. The highest of all I say is love, but the one that counts in a lifetime is the one of you because you are all of those things and you're searching, wanting to get back to that place where you know you are all of the things and you are nothing. And a nothingness is great because you can create in it. And the old things show you that you create it. So don't be alarmed during these times. Don't be. And the more alarmed you are, find something that you can do that you like, that you're good at. Make sure of that. Like go garden, put some seeds in the pot, go sweep a floor something to remind you that you are worthy, that you are valuable, and that you are meant to be here. This too shall pass. I love you, ladies. I'll see you in the next one, or actually, I'll talk to you in the next one. Please excuse the background noise, y'all. I'm still in an apartment, and so I'm still working with the sound.